One day, Mr. George Hill, president of the American Tobacco Company, or the largest, maybe the largest tobacco company extant at that time, called me in and said, we're losing half of our market. And I said, why, Mr. Hill? He said, there's a taboo of men, there's a taboo by men that does not permit women to smoke, either in public or even at home. What can we do about breaking down that taboo? I said, have I your permission to see a psychoanalyst? He said, what did it cost? I said, let me ask. So I called up Dr. Brill, who was a, one of the great disciples of my uncle Sigmund Freud, said, what did it cost, Dr. Brill, for me to to have a little conference with you on a question uh, that is of importance to the people whom I'm working with. And he said $125, which at today's purchasing power would be about 20 times that, 20 times that. So I went to Dr. Brill and I asked him what cigarettes meant to women. And let me say in parenthesis, that cigarettes at that time were not regarded as dangerous to your health because that had not been found out yet. In fact, they were regarded as symbols of manhood. Little boys smoked them to prove that they were older than they were. And they were regarded as symbols of importance in the society, giving pleasure and so on. So uh, I went to Dr. Brill and asked him what cigarettes meant to women, and he answered very quickly, cigarettes are torches of freedom to women. They want to smoke to dramatize man's taboo against women by not permitting them to smoke. And that's why they want to smoke. And then he added as an afterthought, and they titillate the erogenous zones of the lips. Here I had my $125 worth of knowledge. How, what could I do with that information? I decided that there were two days of freedom in the United States. One was July 4th, political freedom, but that was no good because people were in the country using firecrackers to celebrate the day. They were permitted at that time. This was some 50 years ago. The other day was freedom of the spirit, Easter Sunday, and it occurred to me that any young debutante who was aware of the times and of herself as a woman being discriminated against would be delighted to walk in the Easter parade with her bow uh, to dramatize the idea that cigarettes were indeed torches of freedom to and to validate uh, and to invalidate the taboo against women smoking. So I called up a debutante friend of mine, asked her to get another friend and two young men whom they liked, and they, I also instructed them on how to give information about what they did to the newsreels, weekly newsreels, to the newspapers, to the three important press associations, the AP, the United Press, and International News Service, and to walk from 34th Street to 57th and back, it, and back and forth, lighting torches of freedom to protest man's inhumanity to women by a taboo against smoking. Next morning, there wasn't a newspaper in the United States even the New York Times had a front page story 
debutantes light torches of freedom to protest man's inhumanity uh, to women by a taboo against smoking, lighting cigarettes in their walk. The interesting thing to me was that within three days, the newspapers, without any intercession on my part, published accounts that women were smoking in Union Square in San Francisco, in Union Square in Denver, and on the Boston Commons. And to my surprise, within six weeks, on their own, without any intercession on my part, the League of Theatres, which had a ban on women smoking in the smoking rooms under the orchestras of every good theater in New York, lifted the ban and women were allowed to smoke. That obviously set a trend and uh, the Surgeon General's uh, statement that cigarettes were dangerous to your health did not come out until about 30 years later.